Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a Scan and Solve Pro simulation containing isotropic materials and orthotropic materials comprised of flat and curved wood grain directions. To start, SNS Pro is entered into the command line. Add is selected to begin a new simulation scenario. This will open the Scan and Solve Pro interface. Next, Add Components is selected. Since all isotropic pieces have been designed to be the same material, they can be added simultaneously. All isotropic pieces will be stainless steel. Only wood of the same material and grain orientation can be added simultaneously. To begin, all flat wood will be added to the scenario. Selecting grain direction can be an important process for orthotropic materials. Non-curved wood will always be represented by rift sawn, flat sawn, or specify options. If rift or flat sawn are selected, Scan and Solve will analyze the component geometry and apply grain direction automatically. If struggling to decide between the two cuts, flat sawn is the more widely used option as it is cheaper and more efficient to cut. So now I'm going to select the flat sawn option for my non-curved wood pieces. All I have left to add is the curved wood. When simulating curved wood, the guide option must be used for selecting grain direction. This simulates a process called steam bending. When guide is selected, the command line will prompt you to select the guide curve and later the guide surface. These must be manually created, which we have not yet done, so we must go back and create those now. So the easiest way to do this is to use the command extract surface. From here, you will then select a surface of the wood that is a good representation of the curvature. Next, you will go to curve, curve from objects, duplicate edge. You will then select the edge of the surface you just extracted. The guide curve and surface have now been created, and the process is repeated for the remaining components. The final components that need a guide curve and guide surface are the legs. To do this, we will use an alternate technique. We will start by making a rectangle about the same height and width as the leg. Once the rectangle is complete, the command surface from planar curves will be used to convert it into a surface. The surface will then be moved to overlap with the leg. Once the surface is overlapping the curved leg, the command bend will be used to bend the surface into a similar curvature as the leg. This does not need to be an exact curvature. This is just a representation of what the grain orientation should be. The closer the guide curve and guide surface are to the curved wood, the more accurate the results will be. However, some errors are expected, and the difference in simulation results should be minimal. Once the guide surfaces are properly created and located, duplicate your edges. This technique is useful since not all surfaces can be extracted. Click on Add Component and select all the remaining components that have not yet been added. Select the indicated guide curve and guide surfaces. Once each guide curve and surface have been properly added, you may click Apply to continue. Next, I will add my restraints. Then I will add a load. To simulate someone sitting in the chair, I will add a 225 pound force in the negative Z direction and a 50 pound force in the Y. Since I want the effects of gravity to be taken into consideration, I will check the gravity box. Next, I will adjust the resolution to the desired quantity. Under the Settings tab, you can find the Material CSYS Display box. When checked, this displays the Material Coordinate System.
This is a good way to check that the grain directions were properly added to your components. The red arrows represent the longitudinal grain direction, the blue arrows represent the radial grain direction, and the green arrows represent the tangential grain direction. Everything looks good. The simulation has now been properly set up and is ready to run. The simulation is complete and the results are ready for analysis.